Thanks, Chris. Legion Games. Let's talk Street Fighter the Miniatures game. As you saw, I recently discussed my feelings on the game, you know, sort of where it's at in terms of timing, the fact that it was delivered almost two years late, the fact that they've actually somewhat fulfilled their promise of making it look spectacular, and now it's in the hands of backers. So really the test is going to come of how does it actually play and what does it actually look like. And so I thought I would show you my copy here tonight and we would take a little bit of a look at it so you can see, okay, I see these pictures on social media. I see the pictures or the renders on the Kickstarter page. What is what is a person who actually owns it going to say about them? So that's why I thought I'd just mention it. Let's get right into it. You may be familiar with the IP. You may not be. Street Fighter is the miniature game. It has all of your classic Street Fighters. They went from the original three, four, five. Uh, they took the villains. They took the heroes. They took a little bit of everything. Fan favorites, not so fan favorites. Yes. And if you were a backer, you got the base game plus the boss's expansion, I believe, as part of the core pledge. And then the other additional expansions from the other non-main series were thrown in there for, obviously, additional money. First thing up, you get this rule book. And this rule book is something like 30 pages. And it's, it's solid. It's quality. It's definitely got a lot of stuff going on. Because you're talking about terrain types, you're talking about projectiles, you're talking about combo action system, what happens when you miss. You've got all sorts of stuff in here. A free-for-all mode, a power-up mode, tag team mode, classic arcade mode, three-on-three, -three, different game variants. And there's even a glossary at the end. So that's kind of nice. I mean, this is the one thing I probably don't see enough of, is that everybody likes to do their own game system, right? And with their own game system, they like to have their own keywords. And sometimes you see this and it just, these keywords make it unreadable. They make it unplayable because you're constantly having to refer back to what it is and there's never a clear definition. So like Cosmic Frog back there, you know, they use their own things too, but they clearly define them. And that's what this rulebook has done. Now, this is much thicker of a rulebook than I was expecting. I was expecting this to be more along the lines of like a battle con where, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of nuance. There's going to be a little complexity, but the game itself is going to come from how you're actually using the character rather than <laughs> that many rules. But it's relatively easier to read, so I'm a little less concerned, and it should be pretty easy to get to the table once the learning curve is actually established. So... Not only with the base game are you getting those wonderful miniatures, but let's let's bury the lead here and let's show you what else you're getting. So you get some of just these tile tokens, which are nice. And there's terrain that I mentioned as well. That you can see they have these cherry trees, or I'm assuming are cherry blossom trees. Anyway, so you can see double-sided power-ups, all that sort of fun stuff. More terrain more other elements. It looks like you're actually going to have some sort of truck that you're going to be building, like a missile truck, <laughs> sort of like the Guile background army base stage. So, I mean, they really went through with this. And I think that was part of the problem as well, was that because they stayed so true and because this is a licensed IP, and here's another cherry blossom tree, that another cherry blossom, because they, like I mentioned, there's a lot of terrain. And so, and then you get to the massive whopper of a board here. I'm not, well, let's do it. Let's fold this full thing out. Double-sided, here's your military base. Look how big this thing is. I'm not kidding about that. And then here is your sort of dojo, uh, Ryu and Ken style. And because, as I was saying, they stayed true to the IP and they got licensure for it from Capcom, that led to a lot of the delays. Now, take that for what they will. I mean, they stayed true to it and they wanted to make a good game. So as the adage goes, getting a bad game sooner is still a bad game. You're stuck with a bad game forever. So if it's a better game and I get it later, that is really what matters in the end. And then you have sort of, this reminds me really, this is just the style of counter where you're going to have your KO points up here and then sort of your power dial down here for your special abilities. And this is very reminiscent of King of Tokyo. They're a little looser, these dials. And when I'm spinning them, I can just feel they're a little looser than I might like overall. But they're also put together for me. So I, as a hassle, I hated putting these things together in other games. So that's just a nice little touch. And you get plenty of those. You get six of them, actually. So that's more than, you know, more than what you're going to need. And this is the base game still, people. This is the base game. 
reference cards. Reference cards, reference cards, reference cards. If you don't have these in a game where there's multiple phases or anything complex, people are going to not like you. And so this is just a small touch from a designing aspect that shows you've done a little bit of research. A little bit of your power dice here, a little bit of the combo dice. You can see the various sides that they all have a little bit different uh, action and element, block, attack, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm burying the lead, folks. I'm burying the lead. Now you have your decks. And so you have your basic bad guys. You have your Zangief. You have your Sagat. And so you can kind of see what it is. The move, the health, the attack. You know, everything's on there that you need. And then you have your Vega. Artwork is good. Design layout is clean. It's just nice. And then, obviously, you have your protagonists to your antagonists. You have your Ryu. Hadouken. You wouldn't be anywhere without the Hadouken. Ken. Of course, everybody's favorite Ken. Chun-Li. I was always more of a Ryu guy. I know. <laughs> had a had a friend over the other night when we were... I, I was showing him it. And he's like, oh yeah, I gotta be Ken. I'm like, nope. You can be Ken. I'll be Ryu. So, here you go, folks. This is what you've been waiting for. This is the base game. These things were pretty well stacked in here. I won't kid you. I had to really yank to get these out of the insert. And partially, I think that's on purpose because they didn't want these breaking. But also, these feel really solid. These are not your typical miniatures. I mean, this is probably half of the size of my hand. So here you go. This is your first look at it. I mean, that is real detail, folks. Uh, you know, obviously it's not like super, super, super detailed, but you can tell that there's a lot of quality that went into this. I mean, here, look at the Sagat. I mean, and it's not just the, the actual character, but I mean, there's basing too to it. So you can see that there's actually like, they went full bore on this. Again, and these are good-sized miniatures. Vega, little power slash move going on. And let me be clear, these little things right here, I almost cut myself. This thing is actually kind of sharp here. So you can kind of see that there is some serious detail, some serious uh, mold work that went into this. This is not just, you know, sort of uh, fly-by-the-night sort of thing. And I think a lot of people were concerned. Now, you know, if you look really close, now the face isn't nearly as high-end as you may want. But all in all, they spend a lot of time getting the eyes and the face done on these things. So it's going to be better than anything I'm going to be able to do, you know, in the next year. So it's just, it's great. And they went with the aesthetic. I mean, they went full bore on this so you can see sort of what things look like. Ken's probably looking a little too happy for my personal tastes, but you know, that's okay. And of course, last but not least, Ryu. Last but not least, Ryu. So how do these actually stack up? Let me show you a different way. So here's these, this stack of cards. He's taller than the stack of cards right here. So these are big miniatures. This is just the core. The six of these characters, just the core alone. That doesn't even include the boss expansion or the stretch goals that came with it because that really rounded out the core of Street Fighter. So the stretch goal box... I kid you not, the stretch pull box here. Is actually bigger. Let me show you. Than the core box itself. So you can see that the core pledge really was worth it. And I guess the question will be, what was the price point going to be retail wise of the core box? Because these stretch goals alone make it worth it considering the price of the expansions and so you can make an argument the expansions probably weren't worth it but i think the expansions were sort of the wild card about whether or not we're sure they were going to be at retail in the first place and again in this the core stretch goals you have a card bonus stage in case you're familiar with the old school game and then the capcom cup so aforementioned uh card bonus stage floor and I mean, they even give you the cup. So here you can see a little bit of everything. There's the cup. I'm not taking these out this time because it's way too difficult to get them back in too. Evil Ken. Balrog. E Honda. And look what they did there with E Honda. That's pretty cool. I won't lie. Cammy. I forget his name. <laughs> 
Akuma. And then, of course, fan favorite, Guile. So, I mean, that is that is amazing. The fact that they did these. Now, again, like I said, are they perfect? Are they absolutely, like, showcase quality? No. But is this probably leagues ahead of anything we've seen done in the past of pre-painted miniatures? Yes. And then you have... I'm sorry, no, it's not an evil Ken. It's violent Ken. So, <laughs> take it for what you will. But, I mean, there's decks of... I mean thick decks of cards here for all of these characters as well. Oh, did I mention did I mention the actual car? The actual wrecked car here. <laughs> so there were nine on that one. And there are 13 total of the stretch goals. And so of course you can't have without the without the fan favorites Halseem. And I mean again, look at this. I mean that is just spectacular. And, of course, Blanca. Mm, face is a little weird on that one, but so be it. Again, from a distance, from a playing level, more than serviceable. And again, like I said, all of these have basing, too. So this is not just the miniatures. That right there is just the core pledge. The boss expansion has all of your other big bosses that you may have seen, the Akuma, the M. Bison, uh, everything from that side of things. And then there are other individual expansions as well. I didn't get all of them because not all of them really strike me as something I need, but I have more than enough variety and probably, you know, it's one of those things where I FOMO'd a little bit too hard and I've got way too much, way too much. But I can't wait to see the looks on my kids' faces, you know, when they get to play as this guy, you know? Or the fire-breathing dude who's arm stretch. That's just... I mean, they don't have the nostalgia of the game itself, like we do, but <laughs> it's just cool. It adds another element. Was it worth it? If the gameplay is as good as I think it is, yeah, probably. Now, one complaint I guess I would already have is that, especially on this stretch goal box, when you're sliding it back open, you can already kind of see it's already ripping here a little bit right there. It's not the best cardboard. And so having to open and close this repeatedly is probably not going to hold up that well. Hopefully, though, um, you know, I'll be able to compact some of the storage here. But honestly, there's not a whole lot of extra room in these. So I'm not really sure how that's going to work because they've done such a good job with the molds and made them so custom. I'm just not sure they're going to fit anywhere else. So you might be having to look at a custom complete storage and not being able to consolidate too much of this if you're looking for something like that. So next up, we have the boss expansion. So, and originally you would think that this, this being a box almost the size of the core box, it would have a lot more in it. And so I'm a little disappointed by that because it just doesn't have a whole lot. It has sort of the antithesis of the core box with the, the cherry blossom trees. And it has the black trees. As well as a chicken coop. Chicken coop, I guess. And then you've just got some furniture. And then, like I said, you've got another one of these huge, massive, double-sided boards. Another dojo and another wooded area. Now, the disappointment is, I just showed you a box that was about the size of the same dimensions, length and width-wise, of the box expansion. But the only thing the box expansion has is an Akuma. And an M. Bison. Which, again, they are great sculpts. But... Why put nine in one, or more than nine in one, and two in the boss expansion? Just doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of packaging. There's two decks for each of these guys. I believe one to play as, and then one to play against. I'm guessing. Haven't looked at it too much. And then you also have another boss challenge mode. That's the boss expansion right there. And now the two I bought. I bought Street Fighter Three. And see, this is where the value comes in, because this is literally the difference. Here you go. And this has four miniatures and characters in it. 
the boss expansion had two. So a whole ton of wasted space on that one, and that's sort of irritating, to be honest. And then with this one, like I said, the four, Mikado, Alex, Q, and Ibuki. So, here you go. So that's Street Fighter 3, and then the similar size box for 5, which was the only other expansion that I got. I will say, just opening these boxes though, they're designed backwards of each other, so clearly the quality control mm, missed that detail. Then you've got Laura, Rashid, Nikali, and Nash. A little bit gratuitous there, but. Rashid. This is probably my favorite one from this set. Just looks awesome. I don't even know who this guy is before this. And this one's actually pretty sweet too. So, there you go. That is all of Street Fighter. I'm missing, I think, two expansions that I just didn't order because FOMO already got me with those two. We'll see how it actually plays and if it holds up to what it's bringing from a presentation side of things. So as soon as I have it played a few times and I can give a good overview, review, thoughts on it, impressions, uh, I'll have that out as well. So, hey, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for my ramblings while showing you this. So I appreciate it. Have a great night. Stay classy.